And we're back with a game called Flotsam that I accidentally got sucked into because I watched videos that I shouldn't have. And this game, I kind of want to get down all the mechanics of this and just explain how it works because it's quite a simplistic game when it comes down to it. The only two resources that matter are food and water. That's it. And that's what keeps your little survivors here alive. You start with three of them, your survivors spawn down there, or you can bring up this little menu down here to show them off. Now, the only thing that I really care about these is their uh, bonuses here. Uh, a new world is a temporary rejuvenating feeling. I think that means they don't need to sleep for a while, which is handy. Torpedo means they move faster. Uh, Sammy's got, oh, moist, drinks less. That's actually a good one too. And the last one, drowsy gets tired faster. They will uh, fall asleep or re require rest more often than the others. That's the only real thing you care about. Everything else about them is pretty much generic and the same. Once the game starts up, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab a couple of these little buoy, buoy things and place them out there for your little survivors to go out and start harvesting resources. The first thing you're going to want a lot of, and it's a lot of, is plastic. A good thing to do is go with the speed up here. Cranking it up a bit at the start will really, really help you out. Then build-wise, we're just going to throw down something very simple. Walkways. We're going to want one walkway out here that just goes out about eight plastic. Uh, it goes in batches of eight, so eight, 16, you know, etc. So let's just go out to eight, and that will give us a little bit of something to work with. For the priority system over here, you've got priorities you can list everything as. Since some, Sammy here is the torpedo one, correct? Yeah, they're going to specialize in harvesting and exploration. Uh, the rest of them we don't really care about. You, though, will specialize in as a builder, and everyone, usually you want to give them at least one point in resupply, because hauling duty is very important. So once you get the basics up and running, you're going to want to get your hands on one of these drying racks. They allow you to dry wood. Without dry wood, well, all you've got is wet wood, and wet wood is useless. You can't do anything with it. Usually I go with two drying racks because the first thing you want to get your hands on here is boats. If you can get your hands on boats, you can harvest this stuff so much faster because your duplicates, well, not duplicates, your survivors can carry twice as much. Once they've built your drying rack, what you want to do is just queue up dry wood. Effectively, wet wood gets tossed on, dry wood gets taken off. And there you'll see the middle running over there and throwing it on. Those will sit there for a while. You can check out the progress if you want, but realistically, just know they'll throw on the wood. The wood will start drying. Once the wood is finished drying, they'll get on with their next task or they'll, they'll remove it and stick it back in your storage area. This will be your only storage area at the start. Oh, that reminds me. Is that set to three? Yeah, it is. Hmm. So what are you doing? Why are you standing there doing nothing? Twiddling thumbs? Cannot for the life of me figure out, oh, and I'm unable to salvage these items because there's no available storage space for them. How is that possible? We have plenty of storage. Oh, so maybe we don't have plenty of storage space. I may have spent just a little bit of too much resource. You know what? Let's extend this out a bit. We can go all the way out to 24 is good. That will spend some of that plastic I've managed to accumulate. Oops, my bad. Oh, yeah, the game is still very... Mm, very early access, let's say. So there's a lot of uh, bugs where you'll, the camera will jump rapidly and things along those lines. Anyway, I'll skip this forward a bit while uh, this continues. The reason for these drying racks is so that we get six wood. Once we have six wood, we can throw down the woodworking shed. This is a vitally important resource building because this allows you to get your hands on wood. Or not wood, um, rope. And rope allows you to get your hands on shipping docks or mooring points. That's the whole number one reason for get the woodworking shed. It also allows you to get firewood as well, which is useful later on. Once it's finished, you just queue up what you want. There's firewood and rope as the options. I'm just going to queue up four rope is good. That will allow me to put down a few mooring points. It's just handy to have more rope than you need, trust me. Now, I've uh, continued on the these docks. I like to stretch them out nice and long. You have a limited build area, though, in this game. If you'll see here, this uh, sort of the hammers on the outside, that is the absolute maximum reach you'll ever be able to build out to, no matter what. So it's usually a good idea to plan ahead. So uh, I'll just skip this forward and we've got our hands on some rope. The reason we need the rope is so we can build the mooring points. The reason we need the mooring points is so we can build the boats. And the reason we need the boats is so we can go over here and get this sail. We need the sail so that we can move on to the next area via this map down here. But... We're getting ahead of ourselves, so we'll finish up the rope, and then uh, we'll go over and get one of those. Oh, that reminds me, I should throw down some sleeping quarters as well. My, the early rejuvenation thing is going to wear off. Oh, I need more wood. Yeah, I've been kind of lazy about that. Once you've got your hands on some rope, and you've got enough dried wood and plastic, the plastic is not a problem on this map. Uh, you can see there, you can see at the bottom, I've got four ropes, seven dried wood, and 34 plastic, and all you need is one, two, and four of them. Uh, I'll place these down here. Nah, these things are a bit awkward. Let's show that there. This here is a boat dock. It's a good idea to place them on the edge or as close to the edge as you can because if you place them in the middle and then build around them, your boats won't be able to get in and out of those little mooring points. It's an annoyance. 
Uh, so we'll stick one there. You know what? We'll stick it down a second one while we're at it. Because I like to overbuild things. Why not? That will give us two of those. Oh, we're going to need water as well at some point. You know what? No, no. We'll focus on getting the sail first. Once we've got the sail, we'll move on to the other mechanics. So I'll wait until these all are finished and then we can cut back in. Once the port is, or the mooring point is complete, you get the option to build boats. Boats only require wood and plastic. They are, yeah, they're cheap. Let's just say it, very cheap. So let's throw down a couple of those. That should get us started. Uh, ah, the great thing about boats is they double the carry capacity of your survivors. So when they go out to pick up scavenge resources, they don't bring back five pieces, they bring back ten. At the same time, it allows them to travel faster. And if you check out the swim boys here, they have a limited range. You can't go outside of this circle. That's the swimming maximum swimming radius of your little survivors. However, if you were to, say, give them a boat, the boats have... Uh, effectively the range of the map. They can go as far out on the map as you want. Map does have a limited range though. You can see where it starts to get all foggy out here. That's the edge of the map. But most of the resources in general will be a little bit away from the edge, but outside of the radius of your ability to swim. Anyway, let's uh, rotate this down here and get ready for this. Uh, so that boat is ready. Let's just hit salvage. At this point, someone will hop onto the salvage boat. They'll wander over to the island and they'll pick up all this material goods for us. Well, at some point. Nope, there they go. Excellent. So they'll salvage all of those and bring it back to us. Uh, in the meantime, I should probably finish off building some things like, uh, I don't know, maybe some housing for, for these these poor survivors. Oh, I ran out of plastic. Oh, yeah, that. yep. I've been swimming in this stuff for so long and now I've actually run out. You know what? We will put down boats for that, won't we? There we go. We'll stick down this and we'll tell a couple of boats to go out there. And we do have two boats. That exclamation mark tells me that that player is, or that uh, survivor is coming back with all of the resources. Though you'll notice here, they're running over to get water first. This is one of those weird mechanics. Until these resources are taken out of the boat, they're technically not accessible. Resources that are in boats or stored in buildings can't be accessed until they've been moved to a storage location, like, say, the Town Heart. Town Heart? Okay, I was going to expect that to be called Town Hall. Or you could put them in a small storage yard. Small storage yards can hold 20 uh, items. So until those are taken out, I can't build the sail. We'll wait until that is done, though, and then uh, I'll maybe collect a little bit more plastic so I can put down some beds, uh, just to give, just to give these uh, these poor survivors somewhere to sleep. Then we'll move on. This down here is accommodation, or well, effectively floating beds. Oh, sorry, the camera's still so jerky. Floating beds that the uh, survivors can come along and sleep in. If they don't get to sleep, they get this debuff that seems to slow them down. Uh, where is it? Uh, it doesn't show it here. But once their rest gets low enough, they start getting a debuff where they don't uh, they move slower, supposedly. I haven't tested it or managed it, but according to the flavor text, that's what it does. Uh, so maybe it's a good idea to build these uh, small houses for them. Uh, oh, and now that those are built, we can now go in at looking at getting more water. Water is what you need to get out of a distillery, and if your water goes down too low, your duplicates start to get, well, well, it's the only thing that can cause your colony to fail is if you run out of water, these your survivors will die. If you run out of food, your survivors will also die. The way they die is their health is effectively another food or water bar. The moment they run out of food or the moment they run out of water, their health will start to decrease. Once that hits zero, they're done for. I'm not quite sure how they heal up. Oh, oh, damn, that jerky camera is really annoying sometimes. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll just stick down this water silo here. All we need is a little bit more plastic. This is the distillery building. We're going to place it right across from the woodworking shop and because the woodworking shop allows us to make firewood now before we start making firewood there's something very very important manage the maximum output of production what this does is it allows you to control how much of anything you'll keep in your inventory at one point before you'll stop storing anymore so let's say 15 firewood we don't want any more than that uh, you know what 15 is too much let's make that 10 for now so i'm going to set that to 10 and then i'm going to set firewood to infinite now this building will keep making firewood but once we have 10 firewood in stock. No more storage spaces will be available for it, so it should theoretically stop making more firewood. Another option is you can just limit the storage. Uh, you can only limit the storage, though, if you have extra storage bays, which I'm not bothered making. Anyway, I think that's the end of that. Next step, we'll just throw on a quick sail here. This is the sail they give you. Yeah, we'll throw you on right about... Oh, I can't land up at the center. You know what? It'll do fine right about there. This sail allows you to move away and uh, move via this map system here. So once we've got that up and running, we can get out of here, which is a good thing too, because we're running out of water. Though I should, uh, yeah, once the firewood kicks in, we should get a little bit of water incoming. Sail installed. We are ready to roll. So let's head out. Uh, this is the only direction you can go in, so we're, yeah, we're limited. 
once you get to the next area, the first thing you're going to want to check out is, well, pause it and check out these things. You can scavenge up here. This will get you research points and it can also get you food and other supplies. It can't get you plastic, but it can get you dry wood, firewood, and uh, usually not scrap, but food as well. Always very handy to get those. Uh, also, we have these rescue these survivors you can rescue. Good idea is check out what they have. This one's got Torpedo, which is move faster. And this one's got Hyper, needs less sleep. They're both two, they're two, ah, both of those are buffs. So I'd grab both of them. You don't always want to grab them. Sometimes you'll find ones that have ugh, horrible traits like, oh, they drink more and they uh, eat more. I probably would not go for those. Though I'm not sure of the exact numbers of how those work. As in how much more they eat or how much uh, more they drink. So let's check. Uh, once those are uh, acquired, we can skip it forward. This is going to be the point in the game that gets you at the start. This first time, this was also what got me. Around this point on the map, when you just get to here, or just, just get to this section, you're going to start running out of water, and you'll find that this distillery does very little to give you enough water. To uh, help with that, what I've done is I've assigned... Up here, you've got the water and gathering for desalination. So I've assigned two of my survivors to prioritize that 100% maximum all of the time, if at all possible. Their secondary is to prioritize crafting at the workshop, which is firewood. So this should hopefully keep the uptime on it enough to stop all of them from, you know, suffering of running out of water and just dying of thirst, which would be bad. That would be very bad. Now, how are we doing on scavenging here? Now we got 10, 20 dry wood, 10 firewood, and six research points. Where are... Where's my scavenger? Oh, they have to do one more run. That's going to be unfortunate. I would prefer to be out of here already, considering how little water I'm getting out of this. Oh, damn, that camera jumps a lot. Uh, considering how little water this produces, you usually can't survive on just one. But you know what? We'll just uh, we'll cut it forward a bit until this is finished harvesting, or we're finished harvesting this town. This town is turning out to be really, really, really full. You can only take 10 resources from... Well, you can only scavenge 10, 10 resources at a time because that's all that a boat can hold. So it's taken, what, one, two, three, four trips so far, and there's still something left. Five trips, that's an excessive amount. Also, we got these research points. I can go into those now, I suppose. This is your research tree. Ooh, I have to simplify this down a bit. Uh, okay, uh, simplest things to think about. Uh, this here is very important. It's the solar still. And uh, this here, it tells you how much it costs to build one of them once you have it researched. And it's effectively dry wood and plastic. And it allows you to build a rather large, chunky piece of equipment that gives you water for no input. You don't have to do anything. It just generates water. This is incredibly important. This here is a fish kebab. This is what you'd need to build one. And it allows you to turn fish that you can harvest from the water into uh, cooked fish. And cooked fish are twice as nutritious as drying the fish out on a rack, so it makes it incredibly important. Here's some fish you can see right there. There's a ball of 25 of them. We'll be getting into those later. But for the time being, just realize that this tech and this tech are the only ones you really care about early on. All the rest of these are they have their uses, but by and large, these two are what gets you to perfect sustainability as quickly as possible. Oh, and as you'll see, we're now producing enough water. This thing is very finicky, getting this to work right, so make sure you limit how much wood you're going to be... With. Limit how much firewood you're going to be producing, otherwise your, your survivors will spend all their time chopping firewood for no reason instead of working the distillery. And also make sure you get, assign at least one, if not two, of your survivors towards uh, high priority on desalination, just so you can get that water out. If the water runs out, which is usually what gets you, well, you're in a lot of trouble. Anyway, we have finally managed... Oh, that camera. Finally managed to get rid of the... Harvest that whole place, so we'll just move on to the next area. And it's a water tower. You'll see these commonly all over the place. The great thing about them is they contain fresh water. Lots of fresh water. So we can stock up our water tank. And by water tank, I mean we can store up to 60 water in our town heart. So our town heart has this little bar up here, 2 to 60. So we have two water in it now, but it can store up to 60 water. We are going to top that sucker up right now. We also can salvage that abandoned shack, and we can salvage this oil. The oil is necessary so that you can travel some of the longer distances on the map. Well... Not so much longer distances as certain routes. Certain routes require oil. Other routes only require wind. So if you're going at a diagonal, if you're going straight to the right, all you need is wind. If you're going at any sort of diagonal, you're going to need fuel. I, I don't know how the fuel works, but I assume they'll explain in some sort of engine or motor or something that will allow that to happen later on. Now, uh, that's all done. What we need to get up is we need to get up some food. So we're going to put in another dock. Yes, we're going to want another one just so we can harvest a fish out of the water and we'll put you about there yeah that'll do. we'll put in a fishing boat right there uh, i'm also going to want to harvest some more resources aren't i mm. 
Uh, placing a fishing boat is the same as placing any other type of boat. Now, bear in mind, you can place them in any of the docks, assuming there's no boats in them. However, you can only have, uh, well, if you have three mooring points, you can only place down three boats. However, boats can jump between mooring points. They're not locked down to any. So if you place mooring points on the opposite side and it just happens that it's closer on the way back, they'll stop at the closest one in general. Uh, that gives us a fishing boat uh, for fish. You know, we'll, we'll we'll get into fish later, but I just wanted to get that up and running. I think the first thing I'm probably going to research is the kebab place. Oh, you know what? We've got enough. Let's unlock solar stills and let's unlock the kebab shop. Though we can't make any kebabs because we don't have any metal scrap. You need to have metal scrap for that. And metal scrap is a little bit more complicated to acquire. You need to get it only from... You can acquire it from rock, rocky outcrops and things like that. And have we got everything? Yeah, we have acquired all the water, all the resources, all the junk from this map. You know what? Let's move on. No need to stick around. Uh, for this purposes, we're going to go uh, top left to show one more mechanic. And that is seagulls. So instead of res uh, rescuing people, you can rescue a seagull. Uh, let's see what this seagull is like. Oh, they're a turtle. Move slower. You know what? We're not going to rescue you. You can stay right where you are. Uh, seagulls are very similar to people, but way worse. Way, way, way worse. Um, they don't consume water, which is a benefit. So they won't require any water to... Why is that? Okay, everyone's picture has changed that of a seagull. I'm going to assume that's a bug. Uh, they don't. Seagulls don't consume water. They only consume food. They still do need rest, though. And they function as a drifter, but only for the reasons of, where is it, uh, hauling duties and one other. I think it's hauling and salvaging. They can only haul and salvage, and they can only carry one item at a time. Your regular humans can carry five. This makes them, well, pretty weak. You're trading, you only have to feed them food, you don't have to feed them water, which is good. But you've, oh, why is the camera going crazy? Yeah, there's some, been a recent update in the patch. I think it's made the cameras all bad. Ugh. Anyway, um, yeah, we have plenty of food at the moment, which we've been salvaging wildly. Uh, we do need to set up, though, these solar stills. So to set up solar stills, let's go and make ourselves a nice long row out here. It turns out there's no plastic on this map at all, and that can happen. Uh, for the time being, though, we'll get some salvage. Salvage is one of those sort of rare resources that you need to make the more high-tech buildings. And all of the high-tech buildings will require metal, metal scrap in some form or another. Seaweed only has two purposes. One, it ultra late game, you can use it to generate fish or make food. Or in about the mid game, you can use it to turn one fish with one seaweed into three pieces of high quality food. So it has its uses. We'll, we'll, we'll grab some of that now. And of course, then we've got Stephen, who is a turtle and is useless. And well, is, yeah, it's a seagull with turtle movement speed. Yeah, we, we don't want that seagull. Uh, as for seagulls, I, I'm not a big fan of them. You can get quite a few of them in and live off a lot of food. I'm just not going to be bothered. Anyway, we'll skip this forward a bit until we've harvested everything in this area, namely the metal scrap. That's the most important bit. You know what? We can put together a little food section, can't we then? Where is it? Food. We need, yeah, only a few more scrap and some dried wood and we can make a, we can make a, a food, or, ah, food facility. So I finally managed to acquire the resources for a kebab shop. I really should have not hung around. I should have moved on because I've run out of food. But I should be able to get a kebab shop up and running pretty quickly. Uh, it's not a, it's usually not a big deal. Uh, and I turned off the firewood so I could just store up enough dry wood to do it. And our water is starting to go back up again. Uh, the problem was I ran out of firewood. I stopped harvesting wood. This caused problems. Oh, and a handy button is this one. It shows you how much of everything you have in stock. And this is going to be fish kebab. So we we're going to start set it up for infinity. All it does is it takes one nibble fish, those uh, little fish we harvested there. We've already got another 20 in stock. It converts those into one cooked food with fish with a nutritional value of one. The other option is to use these drying racks. You can switch them over to dried fish. They have half a nutritional value though. And I just, I could not seem to keep the survivors fed using drying racks. Also, you need a lot of them. This thing, it's pretty fast. Oh, Assuming someone gets on it and actually uses it. Anyway, now that we've got all of that done, it's time to move on to the next area. Uh, we're going to go towards, I think, yeah, I think we'll go towards more oil. The oil place doesn't really give you too much, but it does allow me to go all the way diagonally down here and get a lot of scrap, which is sort of what I want. Oh, and we can salvage from that town. It should hopefully have some food in it. Oh, more scrap we can salvage. We'll take that too. And finally, there's some more oil we can salvage. That's one of the reasons I like this. All the map, the map will stay the same. Oh, here we go. Someone's finally cooking up some of that shish kebab or fish kebab, whatever. Uh, let me check how everyone's doing. Yeah, let's set to infinite. 
Mm, let's see the assignments. How many are set on food? Ooh, I only have one set to prioritize food. You know, we'll have the desalinators do eh, half half purpose on that one. That will be fine. Uh, at this point, we're at an almost sustainable place. The fish kebab place is giving us enough fish that we can stay just about in the green. The water place is producing enough, or the distillery is producing enough water that we can just about stay in the green. So it's time to do a little bit of expansion. To do that, I am strip mining all the local plastic. Uh, where is it? Yeah, I'm strip mining out all the plastic in the surrounding area. I'm also getting some wood. You need to keep bringing in the wood so that you can get firewood. That You need firewood to run your distillery. It takes firewood uh, to create the water. And then you also need fire to go with the combi firewood combined with the fish to make your food. So you'll constantly need to keep getting more and more wood in. Uh, no, no real choices on that one. Anyway, now that all that's done, I want to see if we can't uh, get ourselves together some solar stills. Or that will require a lot more dried wood. So, I'm going to have to put down a few more buoys. And, boys, buoys, you know what? I don't care. We're going to have to get our hands on some more wood. Once we get that, we should be able to improve on it. Oh, that was the wrong button, wasn't it? Uh, at large, there we go. That should get us some more wood and some more plastic. The plastic is never a bad thing. You can always use the plastic just to make more of these walkway segments. I spent the last about... 15 minutes just harvesting wood and plastic just so I could extend these walkways and just fill in some infrastructure on the base. Though I've kind of neglected the food and water a little bit. So I think it's time to move on. I can just about afford to put down these solar stills. I'll need to dry out some more wood though. Though currently my uh, my water distillery and food needs are, are eating into my wood production just a little bit. I should probably make some more drying racks. You know what? Making a couple of drying racks might not be the worst idea in the world. Will that take plastic? Yes, yeah, just stick down a couple right here. This should help speed things along just a little bit so we can get turn all that wet wood into dried wood. So the reason I like to go up here is you can go diagonally through here. The, the map always remains the same. Once we get to the end, it goes back to the beginning. So I like to go diagonally down through here so I can get access to all of these. It's just, uh, I find that the resources around here, there's lots of research and scrap, which are two things I value. And what have we got over here? Yep, yeah. so scrap and other salvage. Oh, and lots of close by wood, which we will be taking because we are going to want all of that. So all we're trying to do here is acquire more resources to produce an, a solar stills. And once we can produce a few solar stills, we're then not going to need that distiller, the distillery anymore. The solar stills effectively take over from it, which means we don't need as much wood anymore. The only thing we'll need wood for is firewood for the fish kebabs, and that's it. It just cuts down on the awkwardness of things. Anyway, I'll just skip forward a bit while we uh, do some more harvesting. This here is one of the uh, one of the quirks of this game that will get to you. I want to build a solar still, which requires six plastic and twenty four or eighteen wood. However, I only have five plastic, so I should get some more plastic, right? That's that's great. However, my storage capacity is almost full, and my citizens have decided not to unload these boats. So my two boats currently still have some things in them. Oh no, one of them's finally emptied. So I've been waiting here for them to slowly but surely empty the stuff out of this and dump it into storage as firewood is consumed so they can go over and get that plastic, which I told them to get, oh, 15 minutes ago. It's annoying. So I've been sitting here one plastic short. So managing your storage is probably, um, it'll be one of those non-intuitive things that will be quite difficult to get your, wrap your head around. I've put down a few of these extra small storage yards. I should probably start investing in some of the larger ones. Uh, the larger ones can hold 100 storage and really just trivialize the storage problem. For the time being, I just want to get up a solar stale. Just just one solar stale would be very nice. And I think that should be bringing back enough plastic. Yeah, we've got 10 plastic sitting there. Once some of that is unloaded, we can start placing down a few of these uh, solar stills. Oh, wait, no, I've almost run out of wood. Oh, never mind. We've, we've got enough resources. Let's do this now before we run out. There's a solar stale. As you can see, they're quite chunky. That will produce enough water to keep one of my colonists or survivors happy. That's it, just one. So it's huge. It's quite an investment, but... It costs nothing. All you have to do is come along and harvest from it occasionally and pull the, siphon the water off. That's it. For a cost like that, totally worth it. First solar still up and running. Plan will be I'll throw down another two or three of these. But what I also want to get my hands in is some better storage. Currently my storage is just, it's too terrible. For What have I got? 180 storage is my maximum capacity and I'm, I'm pretty much maxing it out close to, or close to. So what I want to do is get my hands on storage yards. Because 10 research points and went to unlock them. Yeah, that unlocked. Yeah, there we go. We spent those, we unlocked it. This is the cost of it down, down here, or you can even see it here. Yeah, it's eight plastic, four wood, and 14 scrap. But we have plenty of scrap. And in fact, building one of these should free up some storage space or free up some space. So let's stick you right there. That there can hold a hundred resources, which is exactly what we want. 
well, once it's finished. Uh, that should mean that we should have no more storage problems for, well, not no more storage problems. That will cut back on our storage problems for a while. For a while, at least. Uh, I'll skip this forward. I'll let that finish, and then I'll throw in another sill or two, depending on how much wood I can let uh, find on this map. That uh, storage area is now up and running. It's quite chunky. That's taken our storage up to 280. That's a whole 100 extra storage available in that area. It's so worth it. Anyway, now that all that is done, how, what are we looking at? Oh, we still need more for the solar cell. You know what? I've, I've stripped mine this whole area. Let's just go on to the next one and grab ourselves some more resources. Uh, what have we got down here? We have... Uh, there'll be food and all sorts of junk there and more salvage. Excellent. We can get some more scrap to build more of the advanced tech. Uh, how much more do we need for the solar still? You know what? We need more wood. Uh, I'm going to go destroy all the wood in the area. We'll take all of you, please. Thank you very much. All of you. We're going to make all the solar stills. Solar stills. Sorry. Stills? Solar stills. Yes. All of them. With much effort. Three solar stills up and running. The way they work is they just... They turn salt water into clean water, they sit there, and then once that bar has reached the end, they have enough water to produce, well, one, one bottle of water, so to speak. And then it will sit there until it's harvested. So while the tanks are full and no one comes along to pick it up, say like that one there, that's not working. So you do really want to have uh, your survivors come along and harvest that when the time comes. With all of that done, I've pretty much strip mined out most of the wood in the area. These things require a lot of wood, a lot of dry wood. So you've got to do a lot of annoying harvesting of wood and then a lot of drying. But once that's all taken care of, what are these you're doing over here? Oh, we do have some more wood over here. Once that last boat trip is finished, I think we'll move on out of this area. This uh, this place has been mined out to to a sufficient level. A uh, quick thing to note, if you go into the map and change location while your boats are mid-transit, has no effect. Your mid-transit boats, I think they just insta-dock. That's all that happens. Let's see, where is our boats? Yes, they're all insta-docked and they still have all their cargo on board. So they effectively teleport back to base the moment you move. Uh, seaweed, we don't need any of that, to be honest. Uh, salvage, you know what? We will get some of that. We don't need the water anymore. Though we'll probably get that as well just to top up the tank. Um, oh, wood, though, is what we need because we want to produce... Enough solar cells. We want about one solar cell for every person you have. So I'm going to want to put down another two, if not three, just because we will be taking on more people later. We're going to need lots more wood. Expand that out. Yeah, let's grab all of that. Boom. Anyway, I'll skip this forward and we'll throw in a couple more cells. With four solar cells up. Yeah, water's pretty much at a, not quite perfect, but as long as we hit up the occasional water tower, we'll be fine. I've disabled the distillery. I just have turned it off. There's no need to be spending any more firewood and labor on that anymore. The uh, fish kebab place I have left on, and it will, it's producing me just about enough food that I don't have to worry. Just about. Uh, occasionally I had problems with the, the survivors not going in and making the food, but uh, once I assigned out someone to be a specialized fisher, I'll, my next two survivors, I think one of them I'll dedicate entirely towards making food, just to make sure it gets done. Though I might, I suppose I could repurpose some of my solar sill people, or, or my water people. You know what, I'll, I'll leave it for now. Uh, this place has been completely harvested though, so we'll move on. I put in an extra storage area over here and a couple of more fishing boat docks. It's a good idea to have multiple fishing boat docks or docks for your boats, just because from mooring points it makes it easier for them to get uh, in if they can come from either side. Anyway, let's uh, skip on to the next place, and this is where the game sort of rotates back in itself. You end up right back at the beginning. Now, if you want, you can just go to our current position, uh, or is it, you can close this, and it will bring you on. This is the starting map, which means you can acquire another sail if you want. It doesn't do anything for you, but you could acquire one if you want, though it will just take up space in your inventory that you will never need. Well, inventory that you will never be able to get back. So I wouldn't bother. I usually just move on straight away to the next village. And... Boom, time to harvest some more places. You can harvest this place for scrap. You can, uh, well, let's see what we've got here. We have Hungry Hippo gets hungry faster. No, thank you. And Drowsy gets tired faster. I think I think they can stay on the island. They can just stay there. That that will be fine. Now, the uh, thing is, you just, at this point, you're kind of heading towards just as much sustainability as you can and then heading up towards as many survivors as you can get your hands on. We have 27 research points. I suppose the next thing to do is grab housing, which is good, and you're going to want to grab scrapsmith. You need this scrapsmith because they allow you to produce screws and pipes. Screws and pipes are pretty much required for water containers of any sort. The advanced desalinator, which allows you to make a lot of water for a little bit of fuel. 
uh, and the food truck, which allows you to produce, turn seaweed and food into even more food. Uh, all of these require either screws or pipes. And finally, the fishing hut not requires uh, fishing nets. Fishing nets, however, require you to have a plastic recycler. And a plastic recycler requires you to have a scrapsmith. So to get fishing hut, you need scrapsmith, plastic recycler, and fishing hut, which is, was it? 35 points, 35 points of research. That's an incredibly large amount of research and it's not worth it. it. It is honestly not worth it. All it does is it allows you to convert seaweed into food. The only things that are really worthwhile are the desalinator and the food truck. Outside of that, uh, well, you're gonna need the scrapsmith for that. Outside of that, you don't really care. This The water container allows you to hold 30 water. The mini water container allows you to hold 10 or yeah, 10. Why would you would want the mini one? I do not know. Uh, for example, this one, the, the the larger one only costs six metal scrap more than the the small water container costs. And you're still going to need metal scrap to make this because you need six metal scrap to make the pipes. It's just, uh, there's no real point to building a small water container. You're better off just building the larger one unless you're extremely strapped. And even then, I'm not even sure you need it because you can already store 60 water. Now, this is where I've probably encountered a little bit of an early game bug. And it's this guy here. They're, uh, they're just going to run in spot Run in place on top of this walkway. Semi flat. Uh, yep. And they're just going to stay out there until they can no longer do anything. They're, yeah, I think they're just going to die out there. Sorry, Sammy. Nothing I can do about that. I really wish there was. And you were one of the good ones too. You had uh, you had the torpedo thing, was it? Yeah. Torpedo moves faster. I really wish I could have kept you. Mm. But yeah, I have no idea how to get them out off of there. They're just, it seems, yeah, that's the end of them. Anyway, um, yeah, let's hope no one else gets stranded like that. That would be awkward. So I think we'll just uh, skip on to the next area and hopefully, hopefully yeah, everyone will forget about poor Sammy. Uh, Water-wise, yeah, we don't care anymore. We're all golden. Everything's fine. Yeah, I think this is sort of the point where you've, you've effectively won. All you have to do now is just uh, maybe crank out some of the other techs, like we'll crank out this one. Uh, we'll also crank out that one, so for massive desalination. And you know what? Let's grab housing as well and we'll grab the food truck because why not? We have effectively the full gamut of things available to us. Uh, did Sammy... No, Sammy still bugged out. Poor Sammy. Yeah, um, I'll just skip this forward a little bit more until we've uh, accumulated some more and we can implement some of the other technologies. Uh, I'm afraid poor Sammy here is about to come to an end. I'm kind of curious what happens when the ending comes for one of these survivors. Well, okay, that's probably a bad name in this instance. And... Zero? Okay, you sure? I don't think they can pass until they finish whatever job they were trying to do. Does that mean they're going to just stay there forever? Hmm, you know, that would be a very grim reminder. I suppose they're technically not past. They're still with us. You know, that's a good thing and a horrifying reminder for all the other survivors not to get stuck in place. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll just leave that as it is. Anyway, I'm going to go harvest some more wood so I can put in one more sill and uh, then we can get into putting in uh, a woodwork, a scrapsmith. Yes, a scrapsmith. That sounds like a plan. With Sammy down, the shortage of labour is becoming acutely felt. It's taking forever for anything yet to get done. So I think I'm just going to skip part past this map and go straight on to Lonely Island where we can hopefully pick up a few more villagers to help us out. Well, survivors, I suppose. And how's Sammy still doing? Sammy still going strong. Sammy will outlive the lot of us, it would appear. And let's see what we got here. We got a turtle. Oh, seriously? And a hippo. Oh, thank you. You know what? I'm just going to rescue both of you because I don't care and we're kind of desperate for people. Which is a bad sign. Don't need the scrap just yet. I don't want the seaweed yet. Now, uh, with that done, we should, I should, uh, yeah, we should have enough resources to finish this map off, or at least mm, finish off some of the buildings we want done. This here is pretty much normal stability. You can go wherever you want from this point. You've got all the research hammered out that you need. You've I've switched into these houses. Uh, these houses can store two of your drifters, but uh, I, I'm not sure if there's even a point. I'm not sure if that gives them a bonus to how little sleep time they need. They might sleep short or something, but I'm not sure if any of that's been implemented yet. Another thing as well is be careful when you're demolishing stuff. Uh, it appears walkways when you demolish them, they don't always go. So now I'm just stuck with that and I can't use it and there's nothing I can do with it. I'm also stuck with another chunk over there that, uh, yeah. So there's some uh, bugs with deleting things. So you may want to plan out your base just a little bit better in advance. Uh, let's see what happens when I deconstruct a few of these beds. I don't need these anymore. Uh, yeah, well, wait, no, 
Don't consider, you consider that one. That one belongs to Sammy. Sammy's going to need his bed when they finish their eternal run. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much basic stability right there. I'll skip it forward quite a bit until I've uh, gone through and acquired some more resources and we can put down, say, uh, you know what, we've got a scrap smith ready to go. We'll stick one of those down now. And uh, yeah, we can stick that right there. You can go, boom. As well as the scrap smith, we're going to need that to produce the required components to produce the food truck. But once that's down, that's pretty much the last of the tech. I think we can place that out this direction. Yeah, we got plenty of room out this side, don't we? Yep, come here. And uh, you can go to about there. Yeah. Boom. So uh, I'll skip this forward until I've got all the necessary resources and you can see how the last of the tech in this game works. This here is the new map section. And when you get to the stage of the game and you've got so much storage available and everything going your way, normally what you do at the start is you just hit salvage, salvage, and then you grab open all the bu buoys and you just go absolutely nuts. Uh, the reason being, once you hit 100 of anything, you'll stop collecting any more of it. So let's say, yeah, we'll just grab one up for plastic. Uh, we'll grab another one up for wood. We're also going to want to grab some fish as well while we're at it. It's pretty much this simple. You you sort of just want to grab everything you possibly can. Once you have enough of it, your colonists or whatever you want to call them will stop harvesting anymore. So yeah, just line it all up, line it all up, and then not worrying about it. But you do need the storage for it. Bear that in mind. If you don't have the storage, you can't really achieve this quite so well. And there. Then you can just sort of sit back, let them do all of that, and get about doing the rest of the chores inside your base. Oh. And a piece of advice, don't unpause the game and try and move the camera at the same time or move anything at the same time. It will cause horrible problems. It seems that was my issue. So unpause it, then wait until it's finished unpausing, then move the camera. This here is the scrapsmith. And the scrapsmith turns scrap into metal pipes at a one-to-one -one ratio and into screws at a one-to-two ratio. So for each one piece of metal scrap, you get two screws. For each one piece of metal scrap, you get one pipe. Oh, uh, wait, no. It's two metal scrap makes one pipe. Apologies. So screws, really good bargain. Pipes, not so much. Now I've made up the 10 screws necessary to make a food truck. So let's show down a quick food truck here. Uh, yeah, there's good. Food truck there. Once that's complete, we'll use that combined with some seaweed to make ourselves some more food. So finally, the food truck is done. Uh, food truck is handy because it allows you to, well, it gives you two options. You can make cook fish the same as the previous kebab place. So you, it, effectively functions as both buildings but you can also make sushi which combines one nibble fish with one seaweed to make three sushi rolls so you effectively turn one fish and one seaweed into three food of equivalent nutritional value to just turning one nibble fish into one food so it's a handy way to make seaweed useful uh, at the same time i would probably disable this now i don't need that anymore we'll let that finish the ones it's already queued up but we can get more calorie density out of this as long as we can keep our hands on some seaweed if we do run out of seaweed, that could be a problem. And how much have we got? Yeah, we got 22 seaweed left and I'm going to move on from this area in a wee bit anyway. This here is probably the handiest button I have found so far. Showing you exactly how much resources you have of each type, just, oh, priceless. For example, we are completely out of wet wood at the moment. I can tell just from looking here, but we do have lots of dry wood, so it's not a problem. We've got about 80 plastic, 80 dry wood, everything we really need. Anyway, I'm going to skip forward a bit here and move on to the next area. We've stripped mined out everything we need here. All we're really looking for is more colonists and more scrap. And there is some more colonists right there. And uh, let's see who we've got. Oh, please tell me you're not useless. Drowsy, I can live with you. Oh, come on. Seriously? You're all useless. You know, I, I need the people I don't care anymore. We're going to rescue you anyway, even though you're useless. I should probably rename you to useless. Nope, nope, that would be mean. Uh, what else have we got over here? Yeah, we'll salvage that also. Uh, next up, we want to build the desalinator, the proper full-on large-scale desalinator. We already have six pipes. We're going to need 20 screws. Do I have enough scrap for that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll give me 14 screws. I'll skip it forward until we've got the necessary equipment to build it. The desalinator is quite useful, even if it is very late in the tech tree. It is quite handy. Now, we've got the desalinator built. I'd just like to point out uh, food has gone absolutely mental. We're up to about 25 pieces of sushi and 18 fish. The reason this is so this is so ridiculously good is in 10 seconds, which is the same amount of time the normal kebab place works for, you get three food. So it provides more food in a single operation. It just allows you to produce ginormous amounts of food really quickly. So you get three food instead of one in 10 seconds. You do have to harvest that seaweed, but by and large, it's still 
faster than harvesting multiple fish and having to move so much around. Definitely worthwhile end game, but the kebab place will keep you going for quite a long time. Now, this deceller, oof, that game is not liking movement. Uh, so this is the high-end desalinator. This is for when you want things to go extremely quickly and make a lot of water. This thing is pretty beastly. It does do an awful lot, so let's wait until they stock it up here. And there they've started working on it. Three, two, how long does it take? 23 seconds. And in 23 seconds, we get, boom, four water. That's four water in 23 seconds. It is incredibly fast. And all it takes is four firewood. This thing effectively solves all your water problems. Uh, the, the problem though is it's really far down on the tech tree. I mean, you need to get your hands on the desalinator. You also need to get your hands on the scrapsmith. And you get those two techs, then you have to make six metal pipes and you have to make 20 screws. It's, it's, it's not cheap. It is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But once it's up and running, usually you don't have to care too much. Still a bigger fan almost of the solar sills just because they're uh, simpler to set. Well, once they're set up, you don't have to worry about them ever again and it's effectively free. Uh, this, I think we're just going to, yeah, we're going to get rid of infinite on that. That's just going to top up our water supply. Uh, my advice would be save that for late game. Use these to keep you going and occasionally top up with that when your water runs low. By and large, though, that's pretty much all the tech in the game. The only thing left to do is, what is it? Yeah, the fishing hut. Yeah, my advice, don't bother. It turns seafood into three fish or seaweed into three fish. Not worth it. Anyway, I think there's another way you can play this. I'm going to try one other method of playing this. I think this is the most standard issue one is going straight for the solar sills and the kebab shop. But I think there's another way you could play this where you don't do either of those. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. This is not so much a review, just a, some more gameplay mechanics. And uh, good luck.